Fractal design cases have inspired modders all over the world who have built some amazing systems like this dark side themed case by George Priscellus showcasing the spacious internals in the Define S, or Metallic Acid, a mini ITX system by Justin Olson featuring a white, black, and red color scheme and a super clean layout in the Define Nano S. There are a ton more awesome builds like these on Fractal Design's modding series page, so check it out via the sponsor link in this video's description and get inspired for your next project. Excellent! How's it going guys and welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is going to be my follow-up for my November monthly build, which was an all AMD system built in the new NZXT H400i. So as I do every month, I parted out the system earlier in the month, built it, and now I'm gonna be testing it. We'll do some acoustic tests, some thermal tests, as well as some gaming tests, since this is definitely a gaming system. Um, but first I wanted to address some of the feedback that I've gotten over the past, uh, let's say, week or two after I posted this original video. I want to start by talking about where the sort of concept and uh, the, the, where the build began. And the build began with the H400i, the case itself, um, which NZXT had talked to me about doing a video on because the H700i had launched, which they sent me as well. And they were like, hey, you're probably one of the only people who's gonna get a video up on this right as it's uh, becoming available. Do you wanna do a, a video on this first? So I said, yeah. Uh, and then beyond that, I was like, all right, what am I gonna put in this system? And I decided I wanted to do an all AMD build. For one, I feel like AMD platform right now, at least when it comes to Ryzen, uh, thread or per two, but um, for the purposes of this system, Ryzen, uh, is kind of the most viable uh, bang for the buck uh, as far as what you get when it comes to the CPU and the motherboard options. And then the second thought was uh, looking at the prices of the AMD Radeon RX Vega graphics card, the Vega 56 and Vega 64. Uh, a couple weeks ago, they had actually come down in price to where you could get the Vega 56 for around 400 to $420. Of course, week and a half goes by and I build the system and the prices have gone back up to closer to $500 for a Vega 56. So that is one of the reasons why this actual system is not necessarily a good value for the money. There are definitely different ways you could spend the 1,700-ish dollars that was would be spent on buying and putting the system together as is, that you could reinvest in other areas that would get you more performance out of your system versus making something that is well, so pretty and color coordinated and of course, very intentionally all AMD. A couple other things that affected the uh, costliness of the system was the memory itself, because it's of course your Dominator Platinum memory and the Dominator Platinums can come in at uh, almost double the price of comparable DDR4 memory kits. Uh, and that's only with me in the parts list using the 16 gig kit of this memory, whereas what I actually have installed is the 32 gig kit. Also, we have an NZXT Kraken X62 liquid CPU cooler, uh, which costs you in the 150-ish dollar range. Kind of weird to have a CPU cooler that costs more than several other key components of the build, like the motherboard, which only costs $75, for example. And definitely a very valid complaint in that using this CPU cooler with this CPU and this motherboard uh, maybe is a little, little bit out of balance because chances are if you were gonna drop 150 bucks on your, on your CPU liquid cooler, you're probably gonna spend roughly the same amount on your motherboard to make sure that you have good overclocking options, uh, whether it comes to the UEFI options or the power delivery options. Now, when it comes to micro ATX AM4 motherboards, there's actually a fairly limited set of options that are there. And the reason I went with this ASRock motherboard was uh, partially due to the M.2 configuration it had, partially due to the fact that just there aren't that many micro ATX motherboards that are available. Uh, there are some out there. Uh, Asus has a tough series motherboard, for example, that I was heavily considering, but in the end, I went with the aesthetic consideration with this board, and um, aesthetics are often not that important unless you want everything to look pretty, and this was a build where I wanted everything to look pretty. Also in line with that is the fact that we've included NZXT Air RGB fans, uh, three of those that are add a decent amount to the cost of the build, the NZXT Hue Plus that I'm using to help control these, uh, and then of course the NZXT Kraken X62 also has RGB control and uh, as I already mentioned, that was a fairly expensive piece as well. So all this is to say, I'm not necessarily telling you guys at home who are on a budget and looking to build a high powered system, hey guys, this is exactly what you should do. This was more of a use case scenario to show uh, what the H400i can look like when it's all kitted out. 
Uh, what you can do with some of the aesthetic options, such as adding air RGB fans, uh, if you are so inclined, and then of course to put together a viable working system in there at the same time. Uh, so any of you guys who wants to take, for instance, the core components here, Vega 56 and an AMD R7 1700 eight core CPU, combine them up with a more viable set of uh, actual, say, case power supply and whatever else you want going in there, post that in the comment section and uh, let me know what you can get with roughly the same uh, level of performance, but a lot less money if you're not as worried about it looking pretty. Anyway, that's enough of an introduction and addressing some of the feedback I got on this build. Let's now move on to some testing. So the first thing I did with this build, of course, uh, was get Windows installed and went and updated the UEFI to version, I believe we're on 3.1 now. Uh, the latest version for this motherboard. Uh, part of the thing I was trying to figure out there uh, with the initial build in the first video was just getting the NZXT fans to light up. Uh, you should bear in mind that you may need to install Windows op the Windows operating system and load up the CAM software in order for those to light up. But once I did all that stuff, uh, everything was working just fine, so that's cool. Uh, second step, of course, was to install the CAM software and, uh, and then beyond that, get Windows uh, loaded and updated and all of that good stuff. But with the CAM software, uh, it's it's had its its share of quirks with us so far. For instance, when I first loaded it, the uh, and I and I, I loaded up my profile, it it actually had the window off screen. It thought it was on a second monitor, and I had some difficulty just getting that to come back over because it's not a resizable piece of software here, or whatever. But I ended up solving that by plugging in a second monitor, and then I was able to access it and grab it and pull it back over. I think that has something to do with my personal profile and whatever system I used this on before. Uh, it had more than one uh, monitor connected to it. But Cam can do quite a few different things. Uh, it's got some basic monitoring here, so you can see the CPU temperature and load and uh, clock speed, fan speed. Uh, same thing for the GPU, as far as temps, fan speeds, clock speeds. Memory usage is also there, as well as the storage that you have connected up here. Then you can see some basic info about your computer on this screen. Here we can also verify that uh, the RAM speed is set at its proper speed. Uh, 2933 is a divider, and I was able to do that just by going in and plugging in the XMP setting from this memory. It's running at cast latency. Uh, it was listed at cast latency 15, but here it's listed at 16. Anyway, that's close enough. Uh, beyond that, there's a gaming overlay you can enable. There's some over, uh, overclocking you can uh, access. And then of course there's fan speed control, which is very nice when you have devices connected to the fan. The fans for the Kraken X62, I actually have plugged directly into the motherboard CPU fan header. So I went into the motherboard fan configuration and I set that to silent mode. Uh, and then I've done the same thing with the fan configuration here um, for the three air fans that are connected up to the uh, NZXT smart device. That's part of the H400i. Uh, for this one, I just made a custom profile. So they're only running at about 30% fan speed when they're in low mode. Uh, and that is working just fine for us. Here we can also see the uh, fan speed of the Kraken X62 as well. Uh, for lighting, uh, this is your interface right here. We're gonna come back to that in just a second. Beyond that, there's a couple more tabs. Uh, this is for the smart device calibration, which I don't believe we'll be touching on today. Uh, Gamers Nexus did a, a little test on that and found it to be, uh, still needs a little bit of work. And then on this last tab, you have uh, some driver information. So we can see we have drivers properly installed for our Grid Plus, Hue Plus, and the Kraken X62. The Grid Plus is what it will recognize that smart device as. Hue Plus, you saw me install at the bottom. And the Kraken, uh, this is just the Ace Tech USB driver, and that will let you do stuff such as uh, monitoring the liquid temperature. So for your notifications over here, I've disabled them for the time being, but for instance, CPU notification, you can tell it to notify you when it reaches a certain uh, CPU temperature, GPU temperature, or down here at the bottom, uh, the actual temperature of the liquid in the Kraken X62. Notifying you when it goes above 60 is a good idea because you don't want to run AIOs uh, with really warm fluid. So if you have a heavy overclock going, something you definitely want to keep an eye on. Moving back to the lighting though, uh, there's actually individually, you can see listed the Kraken, the smart device, which has a couple channels. You can actually do, uh, it looks like up to four channels connected there. Uh, and that is the LED that's going right across the top here in front of the fans. And then of course you have the Hue Plus and that will tell you what fans you have connected up there in its two channels. You can do up to four uh, smart LEDs uh, and the uh, connected directly at the same time and daisy chain together or up to five of the fans. The it's because the fans have eight LEDs on them whereas the strips have 10 LEDs. So eight times five is 40 or uh, four times eight is less than that. No, 10, 10 times four is also 40. Yes, math. 
Uh, now there's a sync mode here, uh, which I was attempting to use briefly. You can turn it on and it's supposed to sync all of them up together. So you can see now when I turn that on, all of the lights on the air fans, uh, the LED strip going across the top and the Kraken X62 all turn to be the same color. And if you click on the actual color, you're supposed to be able to adjust it right now. It has covering marquee. However, here was I had an issue like it, it doesn't, it doesn't work. There appears to be some issues with this specific preset. Um, although I was able to do that. So some of the custom profiles that I saved, I, it does appear like I am able to load up and get functional. But uh, if I want to go, if I want to actually just go in here and like change this color or whatever, like if I just wanted it to be blue, all right, never mind, it's working. Uh, this was acting a little bit more funky for me when I first attempted it the other day, but it does seem to be functional. Again, this is with the sync all of them at the same time function. So uh, let's see if we can just do red, green, and blue. There we go. We're getting a nice fade between red, green, and blue, and it's doing it on all of those. That makes it, that's kind of Christmassy. It's a little Christmassy, except the blue. So here's, here's where I think this might just be a UI issue. So for example, right now, if I wanna adjust this actual profile, I can't, I can't delete that. And it was also giving me trouble selecting the various colors here. So anyway, let's go back and turn off sync all and uh, we can individually address these guys. So um, all channels, since there's two channels on the Kraken, you can individually adjust the logo LED by itself, uh, or you can individually adjust the ring LED going around the outside. Uh, so we can do something like a spectrum wave and here now you should be able to see since i'm doing these individually i have changed the uh nzxt kraken x62 uh, leds to change but everything else is still going with my candy cane theme that i uh, initially set up i do like that when you do ch when you choose a color it gives you the uh color code i believe that's a hex code down there at the bottom so you can easily grab that if you want to jump over to something else and do the same color so let's switch to our smart device channel here We'll do this also fixed green. And now we're moving a little bit more towards a Christmas theme. I have the green and red, and I've also, is, we still got the red and white from the candy canes. This is this is just so seasonal and appropriate. I, I don't know what to do. Now with the marquee and the individual control over the lights, you also have the ability to set up profiles here so you can uh, make a profile there and change between it. And you can also do some uh, settings such as the interval of the LED. So if uh, it's going around the loops a little bit too fast there, you can change it to the slow mode there. You can also change forward to backwards. So if the LEDs are progressing in one direction and you're like, no, I want them to go the other way, uh, you can switch it back the other way. Now what it's doing right now is just a basic marquee and it's in white. So it's not leaving the LEDs lit up on the air fans. It's just doing that white going around each one. And since I reversed it, it's going from uh, three to one now instead of one, two, three. And now we have the covering marquee, which I have also set up in red and green. And uh, yeah, this system very ideally suited if you want a Christmas theme or if you want red and white. Of course, beyond that, it's a red and black build. So you're probably gonna wanna choose colors for the RGB lighting inside. It is somewhat complementary to, to red and black. So you're, you're, you're blocked out of some, but there's a lot of cool options. And uh, hopefully as you've seen right now, um, especially if it's Christmas time, get yourself set up with some candy canes or some red and green, mistletoe and holly. Super exciting. Anyway, let's move on to some more uh, actual testing. So as I was getting prepped to do the sound test, uh, sound and temperature testing on this system, I realized it was emitting a persistent little rattling noise. At first I thought it was uh, maybe the pump and it maybe it was just working through getting some air bubbles out of there, but actually it ended up being this top front 
140 millimeter fan. Rattling, uh, not at all speeds, but definitely at enough speeds that it was definitely a defective fan. So fortunately NZXT was able to uh, replace that. So that's good. And actually this is the fan, the offending fan itself. I have pulled it out and unfortunately pulling out a fan like that with its three different connections and wiring in the back and uh, pulling all that out. Not the simplest task, but I got it out of there and got the new one in and thankfully it's now nice and quiet, uh, which you can probably mainly he hear Hero snoring right now, but uh, we're going to do our noise test in just a second. Uh, so yeah, thankfully that has solved the problem of the rattly fan. Problem number two has arisen though. As you might be able to tell, our lighting isn't exactly all on right now. We, we do have a, uh, oh look, high, high reflection. Uh, we do have the green but uh, the fans aren't going to the correct colors right now. The fans are, are, are what's connected up to the Hue Plus, which is down there in the bottom. A quick aside to a larger problem, like a really big problem, my main capture system, the Godly PC, my hubris is being uh, punished because it is on the fritz right now. I gotta get to working on that, but as a result, I've got no means of uh, doing actual screen capture right now. So let me show you guys this though. This is the cam software again, and this is where we go to control lighting. You might see the cracking right up to th right there at the top, being told to be all green. Okay, and the, the smart device, uh, the extra device part of the H400i there, also being told to be green, but where'd my Hue Plus go? It was there before. Uh, funny thing is, we can go over here to see the driver devices, and it's there. Hue Plus, the driver is installed. So. Don't know what the deal is here, uh, but I can no longer control the lighting on the Hue Plus. And the XT did send me some troubleshooting tips here. Uh, you can go to the control panels and uh, remove it as a USB device. So I'll try that in a second. If not, I gotta like swap the cable and see if the cable's an issue. Also possibly to try a different USB port, but I uh, already know that that can't be done. Uh, there's no more available on the motherboard. Uh, or connect it up to a different PC, but um, since, as mentioned, I've, I've already got the problem of like my main capture system back there not working. Uh, I really need to move on to that. So I'm going to leave this as mystery unsolved for now. Just a, a bug apparently will hopefully uh, get worked out and fixed with NZXT. And let's move on to the sound test. So guys, that just about wraps it up for this video and my testing of this little computer and the H400i. Again, as mentioned in the beginning of the video, I think you guys will find that this build is a little bit more geared towards aesthetics and there was more money spent on that. So completely agree with any of you guys who are down there in the comments saying I could build a way faster system for the amount of money that went into this. But all things considered, for those of you who do want a system that is presentation worthy that you can have set up in your gaming room or out in your living room or an HTP or something where people walk in and be like, wow, that looks really cool. I think it's really nice what NZXT has done both with the design of the H400i and the considerations that they've made to help you light it all up uh, in the blingy flashing with the addressable LEDs and the control via the NZXT Hue Plus, as well as the smart device they included on the case as well as the NZXT Kraken X62. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this video, then definitely hit the thumbs up button on your way out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with more tech videos very soon. It is holiday season right now, so I know there's lots of people who are interested in getting those holiday deals out. So if you guys wanna help me this holiday season, definitely uh, click on my links to the products that I've used in this build that are all down in the video's description. And uh, thank you so much for watching again. We'll see you next time.